Good morning everyone. I am Abhinav Navneet here to present my paper. I am currently an undergraduate research student at International Institute of Information Technology Hyderabad under Dr. Aftab Hussain who heads the Patriot Lab at Center for VLSI and Embedded Systems Technologies. So the topic of my paper is Kite Cam a novel approach to low-cost aerial surveillance. In this paper, we have proposed a new approach for low-cost local area surveillance at a reduced energy consumption when compared to the present equipments. In the present times, the most common equipment for aerial surveillance are the UAVs, which are basically unmanned aerial vehicles which are remotely controlled or they follow a pre-programmed path. They can be either military issued surveillance drones or civilian used quadcopters. Beside these, another platform gaining popularity is the kite aerial photography. KAP consists of a large sized kite with a picavet attached to the strings that holds the camera as you can see in the image to the right. KAPs are currently being used for archaeological survey purposes mostly, but they have a huge potential for surveillance with low energy consumption. Both equipments have their own advantages, but at the same time they have their issues too. Drones usually suffer from high energy consumption issues which limits their flight time as well as their payload capacity. Other than that, it also raises privacy and security concerns like the spoofing attacks and the intentional crashing of the drones. Present KAP structure are better than drones in terms of energy consumption as well as security issues, but they suffer from their own issues like the oscillations of Picavet during flight as well as the bulky kite size to carry the Picavet camera system. Thus, to resolve these issues, we present our own approach named as Kite Cam. Kite Cam is basically a camera module attached to the spine of the kite as you can see in the images on the screen. The location for attaching the camera module was specifically chosen to maintain overall stability by pasting the module near the center of gravity of the kite. The camera used by us was ESP32 cam module with OV2640 camera and to power it we used two thin lithium polymer batteries of capacity 180 mAh each. As you can see in the picture, the kite used is a simple thin plastic kite. This was purposefully done as to demonstrate the superiority of this approach which nullifies the kite specificity issue of present KAP structure. Now we will be looking into the flight dynamics of the kite. The forces acting on the kite are lift, drag, tension of the string and weight of the kite. The forces of lift and drag are generated when wind hits the kite and gets reflected. Lift is the vertical component of that aerodynamic force whereas drag is its horizontal component. As you can see in the third equation which is derived through the conservation of momentum equation where force on the kite is dependent on density of the air rho, velocity of the wind v and cross section of the kite a. Assuming the reflection of wind is proportional to bridal angle, we get the specific values of K and C as shown on the screen. Another important consideration when evaluating any aerial surveillance platform is the payload capacity. We calculated the payload capacity of our kite cam system by using the force balancing equations. For a stable flight, the forces on the kite need to be balanced. Using the first two equations as shown on the screen and the previously generated force equation, we found the payload capacity of our kite cam setup as seen in the fourth equation. The payload is dependent on the velocity of the wind and bridal angle as the other terms in the equation generally remain constant during the flight duration. On the right, you can see the plot between payload and bridal angle for different wind speeds. As seen from the plot, our system weight is light enough to achieve lift at a wind speed of just 4.2 km per hour. Our first test flight was conducted earlier this year on 20th February at our institute grounds. The wind speed that day was around 5 km per hour, while our whole setup weighed around 42 grams. 
The flight was conducted for a duration of 35 minutes and a total of 4,365 images were taken at 2 images per second setting of the camera. The total energy spent was calculated to be approximately 2.7 kilojoules, which is much lower than the energy consumption of a UAV under flight for even just a minute. In fact, the typical energy consumption of a UAV flying for one minute is found to be around 10 kJ. These values are experimentally found and cited in our references. In terms of stability and picture clarity, our kite cam structure performed admirably, on par with the present KAP advancements. As expected, some images got blurred due to abrupt changes in the wind speed but the overall quality of the images was satisfactory. The clarity of the images can be seen by these two pictures as you can see on the screen. In the picture to the left, the ground operator is clearly identifiable while the background shows a decent view of the neighboring structures and trees. In the picture to the right, one can also clearly see the random passerbys on the road adjacent to the ground operator. As the kite goes higher, the wind starts becoming stronger and the importance of its stability comes into play. As you can see in these two images, the people on the ground are still visible, while the image itself is stable enough to extract certain useful informations. In the picture to the left, the number of people in the screen, the color and make of the parked vehicles and the objects on the roof are easily identifiable, while in the picture to the right, one can easily examine the nearby highway and its traffic status. Again, as we can see in the left side image, where the kite is near around the maximum altitude of the test flight, the image is still stable and mostly clear. Now, we already mentioned that some images were blurred due to abrupt changes in wind speed at high altitudes, and we can see the example here. The image on the right side, as you can see, got blurred as the kite flew through a sudden bridge. We are actually working on the improvements to reduce these kind of issues in the upcoming days. With the successful first flight of the kite cam, we have been improving the setup to obtain more stability even during adverse weather conditions. Currently, we are working on reducing the shutter speed and increasing the FPS of the camera. Further, we will be looking into image capture during night as well as detecting certain controversial geometries or movement. Also, we are working on a hinge-based controller to allow a better control on the camera angle of the kite. This hinge control will allow us to specifically monitor a certain moving target. Currently, these are the priorities of our next generation kite cam system and we will be looking into much more improvements on the further generations of the our kite cam systems and that's it for this presentation thank you for listening to the presentation till now any questions